an international team of astronomers, has made an unexpected discovery. They detected phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. Professor Jane Greaves of Cardiff University is the lead author on the study, published in Nature Astronomy. So we asked her the big question. Is there life on Venus? But first, let's start with the basics. What is phosphine? So I like to think of phosphine as uh, ammonia's evil cousin. So ammonia is a molecule where you've got one nitrogen atom and then you've got three hydrogen atoms hanging off it as if on little legs. So if you took the nitrogen atom out and replaced it with a phosphorus atom, then you'd have phosphine, PH3. So what's so special about phosphine? We know the molecule phosphine is a biomarker on Earth. Biomarkers natural products that can be traced to a particular biological origin. It's been suggested that there are possible habitats in the cloud decks of Venus, so somewhere where little life forms could live. Isn't Venus pretty inhospitable? When we talk about habitat, what we mean is much higher up, so the clouds, which are at about 50 kilometres altitude, and that's maybe 10 times higher up than we think of as the top of the atmosphere on the Earth. And in those high clouds, although it is very acidic, it's also reasonably warm, maybe about 20 degrees centigrade. And it also has pressure that's about like the one bar pressure at the surface of the Earth. So that's why we think of it as a possible habitat. How did you make your discovery? What we did was we went out and used radio telescopes to see if we could detect the presence of the molecule phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. The telescopes we used are the James Clark Maxwell Telescope, the JCMT, which is on a mountain in Hawaii, and the network of telescopes, the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, down in Chile. When you're looking at a wavelength of about one millimeter, Venus essentially acts like a giant light bulb in the sky. But if you look at a very specific wavelength, a little bit of that light is missing because the phosphine molecules have absorbed it and so it's not present. And so what we see is essentially some kind of squiggly line with going along with wavelength, nothing there. And then a sort of V-shaped dip, that's the phosphine, and then some more squiggly line. So you can interpret that with the shape of that V-shaped dip to say what molecules are doing the absorbing and a little bit about the um, height in the atmosphere that they occur. Are you sure it's phosphine? When we analysed the data, we found from our spectra from both the JCMT and ALMA that it really seems to definitely be phosphine. It's not another molecule. What did you do next? Next work from that was to say, why is phosphine there? And to do the calculations that say, could it come from natural sources? So could it be a chemical reaction with minerals that blow up from the ground or a reaction to do with sunlight? And we were able to rule all of those out. So what could have created it? On Earth, phosphine can be made in two ways. It's made industrially for some purposes, although you don't really want to be doing that a lot because it's a highly toxic molecule to larger life forms like us, for example. It's also made by microbes, small bacteria, for example, and they're the kind of bacteria that thrive where there's no oxygen. So they've got a completely different way of life to much of what we're used to. Could microorganisms be producing phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus? It's very hard to explain the presence of the molecule phosphine without life, so not in any other natural way. But we also think that life would really struggle to deal with the incredibly acid environment of the clouds of Venus. On Earth, we know of really robust life forms, little bacteria that can exist where there's about 5% of acid dissolved in water, and that's quite an incredible feat. On Venus, the clouds are probably about 90% acid, and that's incredibly corrosive. We don't really have an easy way to do an experiment to see if a life form could survive that. Back to the big question. So is there really life on Venus? I really hope so, but we can't absolutely tell with the results we've got so far. So it may be that the only thing to do is to send a spacecraft that can really sample and see if there are life forms there.